Hey, future respiratory therapist. So question here from Naveen, uh, which is, well, I believe, I hope I said that right. If I didn't, I apologize, but that's what I can gather from your handle. And the question is, is can you talk about eSense? Well, eSense, <laughs> for some of you, probably makes no sense, right? But we're going to hopefully fix that today. So eSense, when you hear it, is talking about expiratory sensitivity. And when you're talking about expiratory sensitivity, what you're talking about is what tells the ventilator to turn off the pressure support during a spontaneous breath. So that's the first thing you understand. We're not talking about a volume controlled breath because that's cut off by when the tidal volume is delivered. We're not talking about a pressure controlled breath because that's cut off when the eye time says stop holding that pressure, right? What we're talking about here is a cycle mechanism for pressure support. During pressure support breaths, the vent says, oh, you want to breathe spontaneously? Then, okay, I'm told to help you. And let's say we just have a pressure support of 10. Then if you're on a, a peep of 5 and the patient breathes spontaneously, then the vent says, okay, I'm going to help you. I'm going to raise the pressure by 10. So it goes from 5 to 15. Okay, that's what happens. That's how pressure support works. It increases the pressure during that inspiratory phase, and then the patient exhales. But what tells the ventilator to turn off that increase in pressure? Something has to say, okay, now it's time to turn this pressure support of 10 off and let them return to peep. And that's expiratory sensitivity also known as E-Sense, okay? Depending on what ventilator you're working with, okay? So here's how it works. It's typically set around 25%. You don't even have to go in and change it. It's already going to be set. Only when you see periods of, of asynchrony should you think, maybe this isn't set correctly. Maybe there's something I can do to alter this patient's asynchrony in this mode of pressure support? And the answer is, is that it might be expiratory sensitivity. Maybe you need to give them a longer eye time, which would mean decreasing the expiratory sensitivity. Or maybe you need to give them a shorter eye time. We typically learn pressure support as a mode where we have no control over eye time. Because why? The patient has complete control over all of that, but that's not true. Expiratory sensitivity allows you to really control how long the pressure support stays active during the inspiratory phase. Okay, so here's how it works. When the patient breathes in, on your flow graphic, okay, they take a breath in and then they exhale. And it comes back to baseline, hopefully. Okay, if it doesn't, they're air trapping. All right. But 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 if it does, then everything is good, right? When does the vent know to turn the pressure support off? And the answer is within the expiratory sensitivity setting or the ESET setting. Now the term you need to know with this is this flow. Decay, okay? And it works just like we work when we're breathing normally. We breathe in and we breathe out. Now, you're probably doing it right now, right? But when you breathe in this next breath, I want you to think about it. What happens to flow as you breathe in? It initially peaks and then as your lungs become more full of air, your inspiratory flow slows down or your inspiratory flow decays. And that's what expiratory sensitivity comes into play for the ventilator. The ventilator says, oh, the patient's taking a breath. 
increased pressure. Hold it until you sense this decay. Now, the percentage that you see when you go to adjust your expiratory sensitivity is typically, typically being a ballpark of about 25%. Okay, Comment below if I'm wrong. You go in there tomorrow and you go, oh, my expiratory sensitivity was at 40%. Comment below. I want to know how your patient was doing, okay? Because it's probably doing fine. But I want to know, okay? Because typically it's at 25%, which tells you this. If your peak inspiratory flow came in at 80 liters per minute, the ventilator's reading this instantly. And it's going, okay, peak inspiratory flow was 80%, and I'm told to cut off when it reaches 25% flow decay of peak inspiratory flow. I'm told to turn the pressure support off based off of my expiratory sensitivity setting when it reaches 25% of peak inspiratory flow. So 25% of 80 is 20. 80 divided by 4 is 20. So the pressure support is going to stay active if this if I so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a pressure waveform on top of this flow volume waveform, okay? So you got a pressure waveform here. It comes up during inspiration. It says, "Oh, patient's taking a breath. Increase. Hold pressure, hold pressure. 20 20 liters per minute is here. That's 25% of the 80 is the 20, and so it's going to hold until the flow decays to that 20%. That's what expiratory sensitivity is. Now, how do you use this to your advantage? If you have a patient who needs a longer inspiratory time to garner more tidal volume, then you have to decrease your expiratory sensitivity. Take it down to 10 percent just giving you an example take it down to 20 percent i don't care whatever you take it down to it's going to lengthen the time that the pressure support is held what if you need a patient that is taking too big a tidal volumes and you go okay they're taking really big tidal volumes they need more time to exhale how do i shorten shorten eye time in pressure support ventilation well Increase it to 50%. Now, that may be a jump, but I'm just giving an example for teaching sake, right? Increase it to 50%, and this will cut off when the flow decays to 40 liters per minute. And your pressure support cuts off sooner. So, expiratory sensitivity, when you see it in a percentage, is telling the ventilator when to turn off the pressure support in regards to inspiratory flow decay. Look at your peak inspiratory flow. Multiply it by whatever the expiratory sensitivity is set at. If it's 80 and it's set at 25%, 80 times 0.25 is 20. And look at your flow graphic and see when your ventilator is turning off the pressure support and play with it. Like, I'm not telling you to mess with people, okay? But I'm telling you to play with it and see what happens and see how, how, how the inspiratory phase changes. See if the patient likes it better. Make it, make it, make it smaller, make it longer. I don't care what you do. Just play with it to see the effects of your patient so you know how to learn how to take care of your patients and put them in sync with the ventilator. The goal as a respiratory therapist is to make the ventilator breathe like the patient, not the patient breathe like the ventilator. That's the takeaway. Hey, Naveen, I hope this helps. Let me know if it doesn't. Please leave your comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to hear from you.